Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Joe Bacella here at Chaken Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you to Investing Workshop, a five-step guide to finding winning stocks in 15 minutes a day. Our presenter today is Sandy Chaken, co-founder of Chaken Analytics. Now, please note that Chaken Analytics is not a registered broker-dealer or investment advisor, either with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission or with any state securities regulatory authority. Chaken Analytics is for educational purposes only and is not a trade advisory service. Past results of any trading system or methodology do not guarantee future results. Now, throughout today's presentation, please be sure to follow along with Sandy's presentation by using the specially designed workbook made available just for today's presentation. See the chat window through the Zoom program at the bottom of your page for the link that is now available. Also throughout the webinar, please feel free to submit your questions using the Zoom Q&A window, which is available at the bottom of your page as well. Uh, I will be available throughout the presentation to respond to your questions. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to everyone who has registered. Now, a little bit about Sandy's background before we get started with no prior experience. Sandy Chaikin uh, started investing in 2012 with Chaikin Analytics and built a killer portfolio that outperforms the S&P 500 and most money managers. Sandy is living proof that you do not have to be a financial expert to pick winning stocks. She presents webinars and speaks at industry events on fearless investing by following the Chaikin five-step method. Sandy has presented at NASDAQ and industry conferences on fearless investing. Prior to co-founding Chaikin Analytics, Sandy founded her own marketing and communications firm in a career that spanned over 30 years. She's held senior management roles for Elizabeth Arden, L'Oreal, and the Franklin Mint. She's also a member of Elevate, a global professional women's network and women in investing network of Philadelphia. So to get us started, here's Sandy Chaikin. Joe, thank you so much. And thank you to Vince Vora, who is sharing his Trading Wins community with us today, along with all of our Chaikin followers. But I do like to start the presentation with um, giving a little bit of overview of what the problem is facing individual investors. And for quite a while, really, um, the, the, the problem in individual investors have is that they're not keeping up with the industry average. The industry average measures the S&P 500. And uh, historically, that's grown at an average of almost 10% a year for the past 20 years and actually even longer than that by most studies. However, individual investors have only averaged 2.5%. And why is that? Well, it's because people buy on emotion, not fact. Now, my promise is that you're about to discover how to find winning stocks uh, quickly and easily. Um, I say we're all in a time-starved economy today in that I don't know anyone who feels they have enough time to do what they want to do. So in order to try something or learn something, we need to be able to learn it quickly and easily and, and execute quickly and easily. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. And all of this is so that you can be a confident versus a fearful investor. And the confident factor I really place a huge emphasis on because I firmly believe that if you're not a confident investor, you're not going to make good decisions if you make any decision at all. And your decisions are apt to be um, poor um, because if you, if you don't have the confidence that you're doing the right thing and have the right tools and have the right plan, um, it, it's going to hinder you and it will show up in bad performance. And that, of course, uh, is discouraging and leaves, leaves, leads to more bad performance. Um, so finding that confident level is is really critical. And that's what it's all about today with having these five steps to follow. So the goal is to find winning stocks like, like this. This is what we call a classic bull in the shaken vocabulary. As you can see, the price is trending nicely up. Uh, the indicators at the bottom are all green. And those little EPS um, uh, flags right here show that it had a positive earnings report, which tends to uh, spike sales up following following that report. Uh, this is the type of stock you want to want to be in. Uh, this stock I bought back end of November at 138 is now 180, uh, and this is not rocket science to figure out how to find these stocks. I'm going to show those to you 
uh, as we go along. So what's the point of investing? Well, clearly it's to make money in the stock market. And I, I pause here because as a, as a woman, the way I was brought up, it wasn't really considered polite for women to talk about money. So, you know, it took a little bit of, uh, more than a little bit, but a lot of a kind of uh, urging to myself to get over that and say it's okay to invest in the stock market to make money. And the reason we do that is to not only fund our retirement, put stash some money away, but also to have some fun and celebrate along the way. And trading in these stocks since I started investing in 2012 in individual stocks has really allowed us to go on some pretty nifty vacations to uh, to Turkey, to Vail, to Rome, and uh, next spring we're going to, to Florence. So this is all possible because of the um, profits that I've been able to make with Shaken Analytics. So think about how you want to spend some of this money. You know, what is what are your goals? I mean, what would you like to do with some of that money that you are going to earn? And that will make it um, more fun. It'll it'll give your yourself an objective, a goal to reach. Um, and it, it actually makes it a lot more interesting if you have a goal to work towards. Okay, so why should you listen to me over the next hour or so? Well, as Joe said on the introduction, I've beaten uh, the S&P 500 since I started investing in stocks in 2012. And since the research shows that uh, historically, um, four out of five pros have underperformed the S&P 500, uh, but by analogy, then I have beaten most of the pros. I started investing in eBay, Yahoo, Southwest Air, Skyworks, and made some really big profits in those in those well-known stocks. And last year I got into small cap stocks because they were outperforming the large and the mid caps. And I found such, you know, little known winners like Senta, uh, Quad Graphics and NACO, stocks no one's ever heard of, including me, but they all had, you know, triple digit gains. Now I only hold eight or 10 stocks at any given time. So other than that, I, I'm, I'm afraid it's, it's information overload, but eight or 10 is very manageable. So, you know, in a, in a portfolio where you have these types of winners, it, that can make a big impact on your overall results. Now this year I'm in stocks such as Cigna, which I just showed you, Lamb Research, and here's another uh, little known uh, winner called Jout, uh, small cap stock up 56% this year. So that's in a market where the S&P is up on average 9% year to date. And that's, um, as you can see, these are outsized returns compared to the S&P. This is what you want to do. Uh, if, if not, you might as well just invest in the S&P 500 and be content with 10% a year, which is not bad considering, you know, bonds are, are less, much less, and money market is, is way much less as well under, what, 1%, 1.5% or so. So um, it's, it's, it's okay to say, you know, you, you you're not ready to invest in stocks right now, put it into the S&P 500. And when you feel confident with these five steps, start dipping. I just first buying $5,000 worth of eBay and $5,000 worth of Comcast. And then as, as I, those grew at 40 and 60% uh, each, I got more and more confident, put a little more, more and more money into individual stocks. And that's how I got started. Now I'm, I'm pretty much fully invested in stocks, although I do have a small amount in the S&P 500 just for diversification. So how did I get started investing in the first place? Uh, back when I worked for Elizabeth Arden and L'Oreal in New York City, they had 401k plans, which I set aside the, the maximum amount for. They matched it as well, which was great. And then I went on to the Franklin Mint um, outside Philadelphia, and they too had a 401k plan. So uh, at that time, there were choices of mutual funds where you could invest. There was like five different funds or so that you could invest, in, and I'm sure there's plenty more now. But um, I invested in the Fidelity Magellan Fund and the Leg Mason Value Trust, 
uh, both of which uh, were two of the best funds. So that was that was a, a, a lucky call. But as my career grew and as the fund group, I didn't feel confident. You know, there's that confidence thing again. I didn't feel confident managing it myself because I didn't feel I was knowledgeable. And I thought it was way too complicated for me to learn how to do. And uh, frankly, I felt I was just too busy building my career to um, be sidetracked with my investments. So always, you know, learned growing up that if you if you have a, like a medical problem, you go to a doctor. If you have a say a tax question, you go to an accountant. Uh, it was very logical to feel that if you had um, a investment issue or goal, you go to a um, investment professional, which is exactly what I did. Friends recommended a investment professional. I turned the account over to him. And the first thing he did was sell um, all of the funds that I was in and put me in eight or 10 funds of his choice. And Mark um, has told me that that's pretty much um, ind industry standard uh, as to what's done. So that worked for a while, um, but, but then along come 2008, and obviously we all know what happened uh, then, and my account was down uh, 40% going into 2009. Now, I had been calling this uh, my advisor since September of 2008 saying, uh, you know, this market is really uh, tanking. Don't you think we should sell um, before it goes even further? It's pretty obvious it's, it's headed down. And the answer I got repeatedly was, no, just hold the course. It'll all come back. It's better to just stay put. And, you know, again, because I lacked the confidence, I didn't override his decision. I figured, well, you know, he's the professional. I mean, he knows what he's doing. I, I better just go with, with what he says. So, you know, six months later, uh, as I was uh, down over 40% in my portfolio, I just, uh, the, the pain was just a little bit too too great. And I took the account away from him and put it into a Vanguard uh, account. So that's when about, Mar you know, Mark and I were getting together and he said, look, why don't you just take it out of the uh, LPL fund and put it into, open up a Vanguard self-managed account and put it into the S&P 500 until you figure out what to do. I said, great. So that's exactly what I did, but I was truly devastated. And this is, pretty much the feeling I had uh, for September 2008 through, you know, the spring of 2009. Now, the good news is that account, since I've taken it back, is now up over 300% of when I, when I took it back. So I've made up for the, the losses, but incurred a lot of pain um, during that time. And I am really passionate about spreading the word and spreading my message to you as individual investors in the hopes that you will avoid this type of um, crisis in your own lives. And I suspect a number of you had a similar uh, feeling or not feeling, but it had an outcome. Um, in 2008, there was a lot of us that obviously got, got hurt during then. And it's not all has to do with wealth managers. Now we, have a lot of wealth managers that we work with and who are customers of ours. And that's great. But even if you do have a wealth manager, I strongly urge you to stay involved, have a, have a seat at the table, get involved. That way you can question his or her judgment when they recommend a certain stock or ETF or whatever. And you can be part of that conversation and not be dependent on somebody else's um, judgment for your life savings. I mean, I worked years, I mean, literally years, 30, 40 years to build that account up. And to see, you know, 40% of it disappear like that was truly devastating. And I share this slide here because this really kind of adds to the impact of the devastation that I felt. Uh, this is the way I grew up. We were very uh, fortunate. My father was a very successful businessman. And we lived well, but uh, 
all of that changed when I was going back to my senior year in college when a particular investment he made had, had gone south. And with it took um, a lot of collateral, which was stock. And rather than go bankrupt, as my father was advised by his lawyer, my father didn't want to do that. He was a man of high integrity. And he said, no, I'm going to pay pay everything back that, that, that I owe. So doing that meant um, selling everything. You know, so the world that we lived in uh, quickly became a, um, a memory. And so to reach that uh, kind of crisis point again, uh, 30 or 40 years later, after I worked really hard to build it up, was, was really a blow. So all of that, though, now, fortunately, is behind me, and it will not happen again because I am now in charge, and I take control, and this is exactly what I want you to do as well. So let me just pause here, and Joe, if you'll put up the first poll question, I always like to ask my audience, you know, what are the challenges that you're facing? What gives you pause uh, when you're investing? You know, what gives you pause to push that buy button or, or that sell button? Um, and you can check off as many of these that apply. So let me just give you like 30 seconds or so to, to plug those in. Yeah, so that poll question is now available there. Um, and keep in mind, you can respond to multiple different options. Don't feel as if you only have to select one. Um, but yeah, feel free to go ahead and submit and uh, we'll give you a few moments, uh, as Sandy mentioned. Joe, when you've got them, you can just read them out if you would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like nearly half the audience has responded. I guess we'll, uh, Sandy, I guess we'll give them about 10 more seconds. Sure. You want to just give them a little reminder about the handout in case some of those yeah. that are on came on late? Great point. As soon as you submit your poll questions, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, we do have a specialized workbook available for today's presentation. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and chat that out, link out one more time. But feel free to use that link throughout our presentation. It'll be a very handy guide throughout Sandy's uh, uh, topic for today. Um, and all right, and it looks like we've got about a good heavy, good amount of responses. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that poll question down. And here are the right. results. Sandy, would you uh, like to speak uh -huh. to those? Oh, look at that. Okay, timing. Wow. Yeah, timing. When you get in and out, 56% of you said that was your biggest issue. That's that's uh, that's not surprising. Information overload is right up there. Um, uncertainty in the market, certainly after what we're seeing uh, in today's uh, big moves. Yeah, that's uncertain. Um, emotions, no plan, lack of time, lack of education are all pretty equal behind it. So most of you said timing, uh, which is great because I have a whole section. It says this number five is on timing, how to how to know to get in and out. And I give you some really hardcore um, guidelines to follow um, as well as examples that I'll, I'll take you through. But that's, um, that's very interesting. Thank you for taking the time to submit those uh, questions or answers to the questions. Okay, so what we're going to do is follow these five steps, um, go through them one by one. What I like to do is share examples of stocks that are in my portfolio or have been in my portfolio so that you can see the methodology of what goes through my mind when I'm making that decision to buy or sell a stock. So the first step is to trust proven tools. And this is important because if you're depending on tools to guide you in making a decision, you better be, you better be comfortable with those tools work. Now, what we've done is base our whole platform on the Chaikin Power Gauge stock rating model. This is a model my husband, uh, Mark Chaikin, created. And he did this after spending 40 some years on Wall Street creating tools for institutional investors. And his check and money flow, check and oscillator, check and accumulation distribution rating, the, these are indicators that are literally on every stock charting package worldwide Bloomberg, stockcharts.com, et cetera. So he's a widely uh, credible um, market guru. 
So after this 2009 uh, meltdown, um, as you could see from my travail, he could see from my travail, and he could also see that there was over $1.3 trillion of money from individual investors like me who were disillusioned with Wall Street and took it out of their traditional brokerage firms and put it into their own self-managed accounts. So he said to me in 2009, okay, Sandy, now you've got this money in a Vanguard um, account. Um, however, you don't have the tools or the knowledge to know how to invest that, which was absolutely true. So what he said I'm going to do is to take the knowledge and know-how that I gained from working over 40 years on Wall Street and take the tools that I created for the pros but create them in such a way that it's going to be much more simplified and easy for an individual investor like you, Sandy, to understand. And that's exactly what he did. And the outcome is the power gate trading, which is a stock rating that gives the overall rating on a stock's potential to out or underperform the market over the next three to six months. So it looks pretty simple here, don't you think? I mean, it's you know green, red, or yellow, uh, but there's an awful lot more going on that meets the eye. And what this does is it cuts through the cl clutter, it solves that information overload so many of you checked off on your challenge question and gives you a really clear-cut uh, reading on a stock's potential. So rather than looking at information on the right, uh, which is what the institutions look at when they're studying a, a stock's potential, you have this very simple gauge on the left, in, in this case for applied materials, it's showing very bullish. So what makes that up? Well, there's over 20 factors that are in this tool, in this uh, power gauge trading. And Mark started out with a universe of over 200 um, factors that, in, that, that pros use when they're evaluating a stock's potential. And he tested them and tested them and dwindled it down to 20 fundamental and technical factors uh, that he felt were the most predictive. And I have to say it works, you know, we say it works like 70% of the time. It gives you points you in the right direction, which is is darn good. Many money managers have said to me, well, gee, I only have to be right 51% of the time, but um, we're right 70% of the time. And as John Carter, one of our uh, well-regarded, uh, well-respected uh, partners says, there's a lot of hyped up tools out there, but a single tool that combines 20 fundamental and technical factors to anticipate a stock's profit potential got my attention. It's called the power gauge rating. And he calls it an awesome meter for stock. So what are those 20 factors? Well, here they are. Now you can drill down and get a power gauge rating on any one of those, these 20 factors, or as you can see, they've been rolled up into four components. And as you can see from this um, example on the, on the left, you can get a power gauge rating on, on any of those four components uh, the overall rating, or you can drill down on any one of these 20 factors. Now, I've highlighted three in red, and these are the ones that I find most uh, predictive and reliable. Price to sales ratio uh, really gives you a good idea of the value of a, a stock's uh, news. And if a stock is overvalued, this is going to be showing bearish. So I want this to be in the bullish camp. The other two factors I depend on are short interest because the short sellers are considered the smartest guys on Wall Street. They'll only short or sell a stock before they buy it because they think that stock is going to go down. It's the only reason you would bet on the way down. Um, I don't want them buying a stock that I'm looking at buying because I'm a swing trader. I'm, I'm looking at moving forward and having that price go up. Insiders are another really um, kind of uh, inside look at what's going on in a company because who knows better than, than people who work in a company what that stock's potential is. And insiders are only going to buy a stock. This is insider buying because they think that stock's going to go up. Um, so if they're buying, that gives me confidence that they think 
there's a potential for this stock to continue to go up, which is a good thing. Models, okay. Emotional investing, buying on emotion, buying on fears, buying on what you hear on the news, which is you know 24 seven, what you hear on all of the emails and texts and everything coming at you all day long. Um, it's important to have that objective, you know, objective awesome meters, John Carter says, uh, because it is just that, it's, a, it's objective. And this quant analyst says, models beat human forecasters because they reliably and consistently apply the same criteria time after time as opposed to human beings who are swayed by emotions and opinions. So, believe me, it's far better to rely on something that is objective than on our own emotions as human beings. And it's pretty hard for us to get away from those emotions. And that's why it's so important to have a reliable tool that you can refer to and let guide you. So, why should you believe in this power gauge rating? Well, over three years ago, we were asked by NASDAQ to create indexes based on the power gauge rating. And we took their large cap, small cap, and dividend achiever indexes, took the um, universe of stocks that was in each of those three indexes, overlaid the power gauge rating, and filtered out the neutral and the bearish stocks. So it was left only with the bullish stocks. Now this is rebalanced or adjusted yearly. And as you can see here from this middle column, these NASDAQ taken indexes um, over the last two and a half, this, is, this goes through December of 16, but it's continued on the same trend into 2017, but they've, in, they've increased by anywhere from 25% to 39% um, above the benchmark, which is darn good. So you can see that the power gauge has in fact added they call alpha, it's added profits. It's, it's a plus, it's a good thing. So having uh, had these NASDAQ indexes out on the marketplace got the attention of New York Life's uh, mainstay uh, investment division. And they then, they now have licensed these NASDAQ indexes so that money managers and their clients can now invest in a portfolio of stocks that are based on the power gauge rating. So we do have uh, confirmation by uh, some very well respected companies as well as in the, in the media. And we've been written about and uh, quoted in just about every financial news work, news media out there. Okay, so power gauge rating. I'm gonna move on to step number two, what to buy. And I spent that time on the power gauge because it's really important. It is the foundation of everything we're gonna be talking about now from two through five. So uh, you might wanna pull out your handout, go to page uh, six, and that's the page that we're on. Uh, what to buy. Okay, so we make this really simple. We've come up with a term we call a classic bull. A classic bull has to have these components and this is what you wanna look at buying. This is that Cigna um, example I gave to you earlier. You want the power gauge rating to be bullish. You want a price to be trending up. Strong and I'm gonna explain what those mean. So let's break that down into a, a live example here. This is a chart that I've, uh, I used back in March when I gave a presentation and I use it now still just kind of freezing it in time so you can see what I knew at the time. So what I knew at the time about LAM research, and I'll walk you through this chart, I'll spend a little bit longer on this one than, than the others just to get you familiar with what you're looking at. But over here in the far left corner, you can see it's a very bullish power gauge rating. So. Uh, obviously, that's a good start with any stock that I'm interested in looking at. The power gauge rating is this ribbon along the bottom. And as you can see for this example, it was pretty much bullish uh, for the year, for the most, the past 12 months. And 
that means this stock was likely to outperform the market over three to six months. People say, well, gee, do you know if it works? Well, actually, all you have to do is look at a chart. Did this stock outperform the market in the ensuing three to six months? And you can see by the trajectory up here that, yes, it did. So you can really do your own back testing on the power gauge rating by just looking at a chart and seeing if it did head you in the right direction. Okay, so we've got the price going up. We've got the power gauge rating strong. Uh, this next um, indicator here is relative strength. And remember in the beginning of my presentation, I said I do measure myself as do most investors against the S&P 500, the SPY. Um, and that's what this indicator here does. Green means the stock is outperforming the S&P 500. Red, as you can see back here in uh, May of 2016, means it was underperforming. Um, obviously, you want a stock to be outperforming. You want it to be green. Otherwise, you're better off just buying the SPY, the S&P 500, and getting that 10% um, increase each year. But if you want these bigger uh, wins, you know, I think LAM Research is up. It's over 50% year to date. If you want to get these types of stocks, this is what you want to look for for outperforming the S&P 500. Now, money flow is the indicator that Mark came out with that was, gosh, 35 years ago. Um, and that basically has made his name on Wall Street. And as I said earlier, this, this is what he's most known for, Chaikin Money Flow. It's on really every charting package worldwide, uh, including Ber Bloomberg. Now, what this does is it measures institutional money coming in and out of a stock. So, you know, why is that? Important. Well, it's important because the institutions and the volume that they trade creates supply and demand on a stock. And that supply and demand in turn affects the price. So if the institutions are buying, as you can see with these big chunks of green here, it tends to limit the supply of that stock because they're buying it up. And that in turn leads to increasing the price because of the scarcity. And the reverse is true uh, when money's coming out. Now it's perfectly normal in, to have sections like this with some money coming out. This is not a panic point. If I'll show you what's a panic point when we get to the, the classic bears. But when you see a, you know, a small chunk like this, it's not anything to really be concerned about. All right, so back in February, this is the yellow hour where I bought this stock. I bought it on February 23rd. Now, why did I buy this? Well, you see this little triangle here? Uh, this is what we call a money flow buy. This is, this tri triangle corresponds to this buy signal that you can see uh, displayed on the screen. There are six different types of buy signals. I can only overlay one at a time. Um, but they trigger when certain criteria is met. And they're an incredibly helpful guide um, in guiding me of when to look at a stock to buy. Or on the reverse side, look for those red triangles if it's flashing a sell signal. Um, it doesn't mean you have to buy it that day. But what this is telling you, hey, there is money coming into this stock. And lo and behold, what happened? Yes, there was money coming in and continued to come in, in in a big in a big way. So I love that when institutions are buying a stock I'm interested in. I, it also corresponded to a nice dip. You want to buy a stock when it's dipping down like this, which corresponds to this overbought, oversold indicator. Below that 30 mark because a stock will always Always, I call it zigzag. It doesn't go straight up and straight down. I mean, this, this orange band is a 200-day moving average. So this is straight, but this zigzagging here is the way the stock actually uh, moves. And you want to be buying it when it's down here. You want to sell it when it's up here. Um, it's really that simple. And these are these are rules that you're going to find on step five on my when to sell. But I'm just calling them out now as we go along. So uh, I bought this stock here. Um, technology at the time was one of the top, one of the top five out of 64 industry groups. So that was strong. 
It had been on my watch list. I keep two lists, by the way, one called My Stocks, and then I have a second list called um, My Watch List. These are stocks of candidates that I put on my list and consider buying them when I have the money or when the everything lines up or or whatever. But that's part of my 15 minute routine every morning and every night is just to flip through the eight or 10 stock charts that I own and flip through the um, bullish and very bullish stocks that are on my watch list. Looking for changes that can affect the price and that could affect my decisions to buy or sell that stock. So you can see by this green arrow up here, I took the profit up here. Um, these are volatility bands. Again, I'm spending a lot of time on this chart. I'll, the next ones will go faster. Um, but it, when a stock rises above that volatility band, it's a good time to say, hey, this is at, at a really good point to take your profit because it's going outside of its normal range. I'm a sailor, so I equate these to a channel marker. And what happens when you're sailing, you have a keel or a centerboard, you get outside of the channel, you're apt to get into shallow water and run aground. So th I think of it as the same way. So I want to stay within the range. Likewise, I want to sell a stock if I see it dipping below this lower volatility band. That means it could be breaking that support and going lower. So these are really just good kind of um, frameworks, guide guidelines to keep you um, on track. So I sold it up here when it bumped up above that volatility band and I made 9% profit in four weeks um, as the stock was hitting its 52 week high. So um, that was pretty good. Um, let's go to the next chart. This, I love this chart. Um, I didn't love it when I first saw it. I thought, oh my goodness, I'm never going to understand this. But actually, it's quite simple because just keep your eye on this on this black. And this is the way Dr. Wyckoff, some 95 years ago, charted the way a stock price actually moves. So this correlates to that zigzag pattern I was talking about. And it's important to be aware of this because otherwise you don't know when to buy and when to sell. But when to buy is down on these troughs down here, when to sell is when it peaks up here. And then as you can see, they go sideways and then they go up again. So you wanna be aware of this pattern so that you can take advantage of it when you're timing, you're buying and selling. And most of you said timing was your biggest concern. So write that down in your workbook, um, you know, wipe off, you can you can pull that chart up yourself from the internet. Just Google it and keep that handy. And it'll remind you of how a stock price moves. If you're, um, it, it's just a great guideline to be aware of. All right. So I sold Lamb Research back in the end of March. I made my profit. Um, this is a stock chart from May of 2017. So this was back in here. Um, when I bought it and sold it. I sold it back up here. You can see it's going above that volatility band. But darned if this stock didn't just keep bumping up against that upper volatility band and keep going. So I thought, damn, you know, I want to get back into the stock. Everything's green. Everything's green down here, right? And so um, I just waited for that pullback, waited for that zigzag down. So you can see here. This was good timing. Uh, it also timed right before they reported uh, earnings reports. And these little green EPS things every three months indicate that this this comp this stock has uh, outperformed the estimate estimates that the analysts gave it. And it's it's an odd thing about estimates they they don't they they don't really rate them or evaluate them based on last year or last quarter, they really place the most, the analysts place the most emphasis on rating them against the analyst estimates. So that if an analyst is, 
the group of analysts as a whole are expecting a stock to reach X price and it exceeds it both in price revenue and guidance going forward, um, that's a good thing. And that stock can typically spike up, you know, five, 10, 15% the next day or two. And you can take that as an opportunity to sell, which is exactly what I did. So this was a straight earnings um, spike buy. I bought it right before they reported. I sold it a few days later. So as you can see, it spiked up again. And I bought it and I made another 10% profit on Lamb Research in a matter of four or five days. So you can take some quick profits like that, looking for opportunities like this. Then we've just We've just had earnings season. We're really at the end of it. But earnings season comes along every two or three months and has like a three or four week window um, during which time these all of these um, stocks are required by law to report their earnings to their shareholders. So that's another way to take advantage of those quick spikes. Now, how was I so confident to buy this stock before going into earnings that they were going to beat? Well, I looked at the five-year view. Here's the five-year view, and that yellow arrow signifies when I made that decision right before they reported earnings two seasons ago to buy. That was back in April. And you can see for the last, uh, what, since 2013, and it's now 17, so for the past four years, every single quarter, this company has beat their earnings estimates. So when you looked at this, when I looked at this chart, knowing that they outperformed every quarter for the last four plus years, and they had all this positive green going into it, I was pretty confident that they were gonna beat. And that's, that's, that gave me, gave me the confidence to pull the trigger very quickly, no hesitation, uh, before they reported that next day um, and take advantage of that 10% of that spike again. Okay, so how do I find these stocks? Well, there's a number of ways. Um, one, of the, one of the ways is through Mark's, what he calls market insights. This is market commentary that Mark puts out every Sunday night to our subscribers. And it's truly, you know, a Bible. And he always has a stock of the week. And back in uh, April, he actually had two stocks of the week. So another example I'm showing you here is Excellus. Um, this was a classic bull at the time I bought it. It's since gone neutral. As you can see down here, the power gauge is now neutral. But back here when he recommended it, uh, it, was, it, was, um, it was very bullish. And you can see everything else lined up. Everything was green. Relative strength, a lot of money coming into the stock. And it also triggered a money flow buy signal as Lamb Research had done. So that gave me confidence to buy this stock um, in anticipation of it, of it having a good run. And um, it really did. It, they reported earnings, spiked up kept going up, 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 went way up here above this upper volatility band. So as it started to retreat, I said, um, I'm going to take my, take my profit now and get out of this stock at um, 25, which was like right about at that upper volatility band. So I made, um, this was a really good profit. I made a 34% profit in two months. I bought it in April at 18, and I sold it mid-June at 25. So, again, you know, gave me the confidence that this was a good time to get out because, you see, I overbought, oversold. It's, it's up on that 70. So, it was peaking up, um, which again confirmed with the upper vol reaching that upper volatility band that this was the time to sell it. And you can see what has happened since then. It's kind of had a tough run. It, power gauge turned neutral, relative strength is, is neutral, and there's a little bit of money coming out and look what happened, you know? So timing is key. You know, as you've all said, 40% of you said timing was your biggest challenge. I, I get it, 
You know, if I didn't have this chart to look at, I have no clue what I would be doing. I, I wouldn't be investing in stocks. I know that because I wouldn't know what to base those decisions on. But I'm very confident um, making decisions when I look at a chart like this and learn how to read it. And I'm spending a little bit of time on these just so you'll get your eyes used to it because the more you get used to it, the easier it will be when you look at it, a chart to see to see it as I see it. So um, Norm B gave us this testimonial recently. He says his portfolio now stands in excess of a million dollars. Before Chagin, he would make money and then lose it. Consistent earnings were just not a reality. Chagin changed all that. I can't thank you enough. Um, so yes, having objective um, tools to help you is critical and it gives you the plan and the discipline um, to follow. So moving on to bull, uh, class bulls, step three, and I think this is at page eight in your workbook, is to um, buy strong stocks and in strong industry groups. Now, what's an industry group? Well, as you can see here, we list the industry groups on our uh, platform, and there's 64 industry groups. Zach comes up with these uh, titles and categories, and then stocks are categorized into each of these, uh, into any one of these industry groups. So the average stock in a strong industry has been proven to be more likely to outperform even a strong stock in a weak industry. So it makes sense when you're shopping for a stock to look for stocks in strong industry groups. Now I highlighted aerospace because that's now the number one industry group. So you could then click on this and look at the 14 bullish rated stocks in the number one industry group. Or if you like insurance, for instance, which is number four, it's been very strong all year. Um, there's 43 stocks that we rate as bullish, but that's, that's a lot of work. Uh, we've added the screener to cut through all of that and make it much easier because the screener, you can screen for strong stocks in strong industry groups and it'll only take the top 20% of industry groups. So this does a lot of that work for you. Now I've put this screener in the workbook as well because these are the criteria that I enter into my screener. And you can see the top stock universe, strongest industry groups. So putting that in, yeah, I can put the Dow 30, I could put the S&P 500, I could put any, any number of universes in there. But I'm only interested in buying the strongest stocks and the strongest industry groups. So I start with that. I then enter under power gauge rating, obviously I want it to be at least bullish, preferably very bullish, but I want those three factors to be bullish as well. And during earnings season, I, I can alter this to go into say, you know, earning surprises. Uh, stocks that have bullish earning surprises are, are much more likely to uh, report and exceed analyst expectation and spike up than something a stock that, that has a neutral or a bearish rating under earnings surprise. So I can I change these, but this is um, this is 95% of what I use um, year round. Money flow and relative strength. That's again the two parameters requirements on a classic bull. So I want those to be strong or bullish, and I have been. Um, as I said earlier, I was looking at small and mid-cap stocks because they the small ma small cap stocks have not been doing as well late lately. So the screener I just um, did for this presentation, which is here, you can see by this arrow at the bottom left, I changed it to the, the criteria to mid and large cap. So I took a universe of the 5,000 stocks that we monitor, literally in less than 30 seconds, I am down to seven stocks. I mean, that's pretty cool, don't you think? I think it's really cool. So then I can save this list and flip through each of these seven stock charts. 
and then the candidates stocks that I like I'll put on my watch list and then they become part of my 15 minute routine um, in the morning and night 15 minutes total uh, just scrolling through those strong um, stocks on my watch list to see if now's the time to buy them or if anything has changed that would affect my decision. So I highlight APO because this is a stock that I own and I bought this a couple of weeks ago. This had been on my watch list from a screener. I put it on my watch list. I go through that watch list every day and I bought it on August 8th when it triggered a momentum a breakout signal, which is this little triangle right up here it correlates. And you can see everything was lining up. In addition to getting that momentum, the timing was right, which is not always the case when that momentum uh, buy signal triggers, but it was also oversold. It was under that 30 dip. So that gave me the ideal time and the confidence to buy this stock, um, which I did. So I bought it at 29. Um, and that was a couple of weeks ago. I still own this stock. So here's another stock that was on the screener uh, today. Um, APO was still on the screener. So it still fits all of my criteria as it did weeks ago. And progressive uh, insurance. Now I showed you on that industry chart that insurance is number four industry group. So it's incredibly strong right now. And look at this beautiful chart. <laughs> It's about as good as it gets, right? I mean, it's all green. It's very bullish. Power gauge rating up here. Everything's green. And you're getting these uh, buy signals. So, uh, Joe, maybe you can put up a poll here. I wanted to ask you all, do you think this is a stock that you should buy now or, or wait? I mean, looking at the indicators as I've explained them, if I've explained them well enough, um, you'll give me the answer I want to hear. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how good I am at explaining this. All right, let's see. We'll give this a few more seconds there. So pretty straightforward. What would you want to do with Progressive? Would you consider buying it now or do you think you would want to wait? And uh, for either direction that you prefer, why don't you go ahead and also you can comment right into the Q&A window and let us know what you think as to why, of course. All right, so let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and share these results. Okay, great. So 64% of you said wait, and 36% said buy. So of those that said wait, I suspect the reason was is because it wasn't dipping down, right? This is this overbought, oversold. It's not showing the 70 and the 30 on this chart. It cut it off. But you want to wait for this stock to dip down closer to this 30 to buy it because you can see now it's bumping up against that upper volatility then it's probably at an all-time high that's not when you want to that's not when you want to buy a stock you want to wait for that pullback remember that Wyckoff chart with all that zigzagging you want to wait for this to zigzag down and this overbought oversold indicator will help you um, identify that timing Okay, great. I started the webinar by saying we are all time poor, <laughs> that I don't know anyone who has enough time to do what they want to do in a day. And we got this testimony actually about three or four years ago, but I've kept it because Cheryl is now using the screener, which is even saving her more time than several years ago when she wrote this, because the screener is an enormous time saver. All right, let's uh, move on. The losers is just as important as finding the winners. And loss is inevitable. Uh, it took me a while to figure that out, or to accept that, I should say. But it's impossible. Even Warren Buffett does not always buy winners and have profits. You know, everyone who invests in stocks has some winners and some losers. The, the, the trick, the key is to minimize the losses. And by identifying a classic bull pattern, this will help you avoid getting into them in the first place 
or if you're in a stock that has a classic bear pattern, it will help you say, boy, I better get out of this stock. So let's break it down on an example of a stock that Mark has been talking about and alerting our subscribers to in his Market Insights Weekly um, report since April. I mean, he's been touting the auto parts uh, stocks as stocks that are bearish, that if you own them, get out, get out of them, or um, trade, if you're an options trader, trade them, you know, trade a put, put option on them, make money on the way down. Um, so I circle back in April when he started talking about them and look at this, look at this chart here has a red power gauge rating for most of the year underperforming the market. Money has been coming out of this stock for the most part all year and look at the price. It's trending down and it zigzags down. This is this classic Wyckoff pattern. And you can see there are some sell signals that would help you along the way if you weren't already out by then. And you can see by the EPS, this stock has been underperforming the analyst estimates for the last three quarters. And the quarter they just reported, I mean, look at this drop. I mean, you, you just don't want to own this stock if you're, if you're investing as a swimming trader it'd be great as an options trader. And these sell signals and these patterns have been incredibly profitable for our subscribers who trade options. So this stock is down 41% from when Mark first started talking about it in April. And just a couple of days ago when they reported earnings, it dropped another 22%. 22% you know, of that 41% was just in the last week. So you know these are patterns you want to definitely be aware of. Here's the Wyckoff chart, obviously the reverse of the bearish, of the bullish Wyckoff chart. And here's another example to sorrow. And I, I drill down on the earnings because being an earnings season, uh, I mentioned that I did screen, you know, for earnings surprise right here. Um, and look at these earnings component on a stock more carefully when it's in earnings season. So I, uh, I ran this, this chart yesterday. This stock had, had recently reported earnings, as you can see down here. And no surprise, because this is a, a very bearish earnings component, very bearish power gauge rating. Everything's wrong. Relative strength's bad. Money's coming out you're getting these sell signals. Um, so it's no surprise that this stock dropped, you know, again, uh, or even further when they reported. These are the patterns you want your eye to get used to and set yourself up. So I said we have a lot of options traders that have made a lot of money. Um, Ken is one of them and just a few weeks ago, he gave us this testimonial that he started with Chagin January 4th with $235,000. And as of today, which was July 30th, he's at a million two. So um, this is powerful stuff. Um, you can't argue with success. I mean, this is, this is what this type of um, uh, system can do for you. If you follow it and follow the guidelines, follow the rules. Okay, so how do you know when those signals are triggering? You know, how do you know when to buy and sell? Now this section, I see that we're almost at time. This is gonna take us another 10 minutes. So um, Joe, do you have a poll just to ask the audience if they want me to spend the time on this? It's gonna take another 10 minutes, it's gonna take us over time. Uh, to, to continue with the examples, I know this was the biggest challenge most of you um, noted. So I'm happy to keep going on this, but I, it is going to take us over time. Um, those of you who have to hop off when we reach the hour, um, no worries. This is being recorded and will be sent to you in the morning. So let me yeah. know if you want me to keep going. Let's see. I think I've 
so I just put that poll question up there. I think I put the wrong one up there for a second. But anyways, the right one is listed. So just simply, um, again, regarding timing, uh, I know we saw a really good response there, but as Sandy mentioned, it's going to take a few minutes. But let us know. Um, obviously, uh, we would love to share this with you if there's great demand. And so I'll give that just a couple more seconds. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think uh, I think we should move ahead. Whoa, 91%. Thank you. I love you guys. Awesome. Okay. Those that say skip, uh, it will be recorded. You can you can get it. Um, you can hear it tomorrow. I know we're all, as I say, we're time poor. Okay, so how do you know when those buy signals and sell signals trigger? You know, you don't want to go through every stock looking for a signal. Um, so we've made that easy by adding this little bell here, which we call the alerts view, which when you click on this little bell and you can click, this is on any stock list. I'm doing it on my screener, the screener that I did yesterday, but I can, I can do this same overlay on my watch list and on my uh, stock list, which is what I do every day. This is part of my 15 minute routine. But this will highlight, as it's done here, the buy and sell signals. It'll also highlight if a power gauge rating has turned, say, from neutral to bullish, or if an analyst opinion has, analyst estimate, excuse me, has been uh, revised, either up or down. So anything that could really affect the price of a stock goes into this alerts window and gets pushed to me uh, whenever I overlay this alerts view on any list. So I've done this on the screener. Uh, you can see it's triggered this oversold buy on Huntington Ingalls, an aerospace defense stock. And here you can see this nice oversold buy. Oversold means it's dip down to this 30 mark. So that correlates, you know, with the timing. That's that's the ideal time to buy this stock. And if everything else is lining up, this could be a really good stock to to buy now. Um, let me move on to the next example. Knowing when to sell. Okay, there's two scenarios of when I sell, either to take a profit or that I'm sensing a stock is breaking down and I want to get out before it tanks. And these are, these are um, outlined in your workbook as well, in your guidebook. Okay, when I sell, take profit. That price hits that upper volatility band, you know, that's that upper channel market I pointed out. The price is overbought, that means it's zigging up above that 70 mark on the overbought, oversold indicator, or the price spikes after the strong, a strong earnings report. So let's go back to LAM Research. So this is a current chart of LAM Research, and I noted on here the various times I bought this stock. If you recall back on the classic bull, I used this as one example, this first buy back in February, and this as the second buy um, later on, and I use these as the examples of when to buy a classic bull. So just briefly, I bought this down here in February when it triggered this money flow buy. I sold it, the chart got a little bit out of whack here, but I sold it up here um, when, it, when it hit up against this upper volatility band. I bought it back, I'm sorry, when I transferred this to a PDF, the uh, the arrows went a little bit haywire, but I bought it back right before the earnings here to take advantage of that earnings spike, and I sold it when it hit up against this upper volatility band a week later, three or four days later, um, again to take that profit because it was hitting up. Of, of examples here, you know, buying with the signals, selling when it hits the upper volatility band to take the profit, or selling when it spikes on the earnings to take the profit. So those are the the two scenarios uh, that this that Lamb Research uh, it signifies here. 
Now, I've since bought the stock back. Uh, this is the number three yellow arrow here. I bought it back when it was dipping down. And I was confident about this because the power gauge was still green. Relative strength was still outperforming. Money flow was a little bit weak, but based on the strength of this stock and everything else I was looking at, I felt it was a good opportunity. It had gone up to, I think it was like 162 as a high, pulled back to 150. And I thought this stock had good potential, which it does. Uh, it closed tonight at 160. So it's, it's up 10 points since I bought it. Um, when was that? Late June, I think. Um, yeah, June 28th, I bought it at 150. So another example of taking the profit, um, this, this shows taking the profit, but it also shows a breakdown coming. So it kind of combines the two rules. And I use this because it's like the perfect example. Um, even though it was a couple of months ago, I bought this stock back in December um, at this dip down in here. You can see it pulled back. It was insurance. Insurance was very strong then. It was very bullish when I bought the stock. This is today's screen, so it's now neutral. Um, and then I, I took the, I rode the, the ride stock up and look, look what it did here. It hit up in this upper volatility band. And at the time, you know, this is all I saw. You know, it was late February. And power gauge was strong, relative strength was strong, but the money was just starting to turn negative. And I thought, wow, you know, I better just take this nice profit because it's hitting this upper volatility band. So I took the profit, I sold it, I made a 17% profit. Um, and then literally two days later, they pre-reported, which is really odd. You see the EPS here, they weren't due to report till like 10 days later, but two days later, they pre-reported a very gl glum outlook and the stock dropped like 10%. And then they reported, and the stock continued to drop after they reported. And the subsequent earning report, two earnings reports have disappointed, including the one they just reported on a few days ago. And this, I mean, this stock is now um, down 36% from when, from when I bought, when I, I'm sorry, it's down 62% from where I sold it back in February. So you can see the buy and hold scenario doesn't work anymore. You know, you gotta be on top of your stocks. You gotta go through these charts every day and take it seriously, because this is your money. I mean, nobody's gonna be more interested in your money than you are. And if you, if you follow this consistently, um, I, I can't see why you wouldn't be able to enjoy the same results I have because I'm no, I'm no stock guru. <laughs> I, you know, I, I mean, I never took an economics course or a finance course or anything. And I don't know half the jargon they use when I listen to them on CNBC, but I don't need to, you know, everything I need to know literally is on this chart. And I think this is like the perfect example. And then the news, we do put news articles into our, um, uh, platforms so that you can drill down and see. But if you want to see maybe what's causing this enormous drop from the, from the, from 11 to seven, I mean, it's a huge drop. It's like, that's the 36% drop right there. After they reported, you know, the company's being investigated for fraud. So, I mean, you don't need to know that when you look at these indicators, you don't even need to know the name of this, You just need to look at the red and the green and you can tell um, and make decisions based on this red and green. But if you want to know, you know, here it is, you know, they're being investigated for fraud and there's lawsuits against this, the management of this company. I mean, that does help explain it. If you want to know the why. 
Okay, so Anil um, has been a subscriber for a number of years. He teaches courses in Delaware on investing in the stock market. And he gave us this testimonial back in January saying he's followed my cell rules and sold EME, uh, making 23% profit in less than three weeks. So um, he says, my rules are more complex, but I'm going to follow yours in a test portfolio. So a couple of months later, I said, okay, so Anil, what happened in that test portfolio? And this is this little box down here. So, you know, these are the other um, profits that he made following these rules. So it's not just me saying these rules work. I mean, they really do work. So here are the rules um, to get out when a stock is breaking down. You know, the power gauge turns neutral. And another indicator, particularly money flow, turns negative. When the institutions start selling, uh, the, take note. Uh, certainly when you get a sell signal, or if that price drops below you know, the orange line, that 200-day moving average, or below the volatility band. So here's one final example. This is Entergy. Uh, this is a stock that had been on my watch list for a while. I bought it late June when this uh, alert triggered, relative strength buy triggered at 78. It also triggered, I can only overlay one at a time, but it also triggered on the same day an oversold buy. So that obviously confirmed that it was below the 30, which indeed it is. However, like the next day, the power gains turns neutral. And then a few days later, relative strength turned and money flow started to turn. So I only owned this stock for, gosh, it was less than two weeks but I sold it here at this red arrow. Uh, you can see it was dropping below that volatility band, it was dropping below the 200 day moving average and negative money flow, negative relative strength and neutral power grades. So not a good outlook on this, on this stock. So I said, I'm gonna cut my losses and just sell it. So I bought it at 78, I sold it two weeks later at 76 took a small loss. Uh, it's now up to 78 again. Um, and let's take one final poll, Joe, and ask the audience if they would buy Entergy back now. Um, or wait. Now that you have looked at all these charts and are immersed in Chaikin charts, an expert in Chaikin charts, <laughs> Let's see what your feeling is. I'll give you a few more seconds. I see there's still a few more responses coming in. Okay, great. Thanks, Joe. But it does look pretty one-sided. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and show that here. All right. Whoa. Nice. Okay, 82% of you said you'd wait, and 18% said you'd buy it now. And I would go with the weights. Um, Again, because when, before I buy something, I want everything to be lined up perfectly and green. Relative strength is not green. It's, it's underperforming the S&P 500. Money flow is good, but you can see here that it's not oversold, meaning it's not dipping down below this 30 mark. You want to wait for that zigzag to go down. So this is all, you know, getting used to looking at these charts, but I see that 81% of you um, get it. And those that don't, you want to make sure that you wait for that oversold condition, unless you're bumping up against an earnings report, where it's obviously a deadline. And, and the earnings decision uh, takes, takes precedence over waiting for that oversold to happen. Okay, great. So that goes through, and thank you all for bearing with me those extra 10 minutes. That takes us through the five steps. So just to recap, first, you want to know what to buy. That's the classic, bill, bu classic bull. You want to buy strong stocks and in strong industry groups, and you know, want to know what to avoid or that classic bear and you want to know when to buy and sell. And those are to follow the rules that I've outlined 
herein and, and in the guidebook. So in, my, in the beginning, I made a promise to you that you would discover how to find winning stocks quickly and easily and become confident versus fearful investors. And that confidence really rides into every aspect now of my life because this is the one area that I had not mastered. And now I have mastered it. You know, as I said earlier, my account has increased by over 300% since I took it over in 2009. And I'm now a very confident investor. And that gives me confidence in every other area of my life. So it's really been a game changer. And I want to instill that same feeling in you, not only for your sense of self-worth, but for your profits as well. Uh, it's fun making money because we've been able to enjoy some really great vacations. So John Malden gave us this uh, wonderful testimonial. Um, his analysts use Chaken, and they use it to analyze the traits and recommendations um, of the writing team, giving them feedback and insight into their own ideas. So this system has been integrated into Malden's routine due diligence for vetting and evaluating potential investments. And John Molden has a huge following. He has over a million um, subscribers to his weekly newsletter. So he's, he's very well regarded in the industry and uses Chaken as part of his due diligence. Okay, so the platform, uh, we call it the Financial Freedom Fast Track. I can't say that quickly. But our platform has won recently the Benzaga Global FinTech Award for the Best Stock Idea Platform. So we're pretty proud of that. And that was awarded to us in May. Uh, what the platform includes, as I've, I've shown some of these uh, features to you, but I didn't get a chance to show all of them. But the screener, you'll see that screener on the left. On the right is something we call options play. It's an overlay for those of you trading options. Uh, this is a really... Um, easy way to identify high probability options trades and it comes bundled into the subscription at no extra cost and joe and his team do give uh, sessions uh, training sessions to our subscribers specific, specifically on options so we spend a lot of time uh, training you so that you can get the most out of chaken so obviously the platform uses or gives you the 20 factor model, Jake and power gauge rating, stock discovery engine. This is another feature we've recently added where you can seed the, the discovery engine with uh, any stock. It's kind of like Pandora for stocks. You plug a stock in, it'll give you other stocks like that stock. So that's a pretty cool way. That's, that's really what got us the award for Benziga's stock, best stock ideas, you know, for doing that. Um, the platform usually is $1,950 for a year subscription. Uh, we're taking $200 off, but if you'll stay with me, we're going to sweeten the pot, make it even a little bit better for you. But in addition, I mean, these are additional features that you get with your annual subscription. You get a one-day view, so you can identify, pinpoint the exact time to buy or, stock, buy or sell a stock or ETF during the day. You get the earnings drill down, uh, which, I, which I referenced. And on the far right, that's just an um, iPhone app of the Market Insights that Mark issues every Sunday evening with his um, market commentary and stock ideas again. And this part I really love, and this is this is Joe's baby, um, giving our our giving our subscribers the training that they need, training and coaching, which is ongoing every week. Um, Joe trains and his team train train our newest subscribers, and when you subscribe by tonight, you could get into a training session as early as tomorrow, right, Joe? I mean, they could be into one, I think, tomorrow at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock Eastern time. We have okay. one more. It'll be our onboard session, which is great for new subscribers. Perfect. Perfect. 
So when you subscribe by midnight tonight or tomorrow morning, you'll get into that two o'clock session and Joe will walk you through how to set up your list, how to identify that alerts view, how to use that um, stock discovery engine. And what I really highlight here is that this is unlimited. You know, there's unlimited coaching and support. We have subscriber only sessions every other week. Um, and if you want a one-on-one -on -one session uh, with Joe or David or Josh, all you have to do is, is, is ask and they'll give you unlimited one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know, one hour coaching and, and, and more for as long as it takes to get you comfortable with using Chaken and having it mesh with your individual trading style. So I'm not aware of any other company that will spend um, staff time one-on-one -on -one coaching, but we are totally committed to training because we want you obviously to be successful. All right, so I said I was gonna sweeten the pot. We'll take an additional $100 off for a total of a savings of $300, but that extra 100 is only good when you subscribe by midnight tonight. So I'll turn this back to Joe to wrap it up, but um, I want to thank all of you for attending. I hope you'll be on Joe's onboarding session tomorrow at 2 and get on to Chaken so you can start taking advantage of this workstation and the fabulous tools that you know have allowed me to be a very confident, independent investor. And we want you to be in that same boat. All right, Joe, back to you. Awesome. Sandy, thank you so much. Um, I hope you enjoyed everybody today's presentation. Um, we are just going to go ahead and uh, I want to pull up in the chat room where the link for the workbook is available. I just posted a link directly to Sandy's page um, where you can take advantage of that offer. Uh, so again, that's 1650 for a full year to Chaken Analytics. I saw there was just a question about that. So yes, that's a full year's worth of access to the platform, to the small group sessions, to one-on-one -on -one sessions, all of that great information information that can be so helpful for you. Um, so I'd greatly re recommend joining us, especially that we are getting close to the end of the week. We have one more day left. And then I know today ended with a pretty big bang. Um, so in order to really just stay on top of those trends, you can certainly join us for tomorrow's onboard session. We'll show you how all this functionality works. Uh, right now I'm showing you the quick link. Um, so, so again, that checkout page where you can access this content. Um, again, shakenanalytics.com forward slash Sandy. You'll see a checkout page. We'll automatically apply that discount code. So, uh, so there's no technical issues with that. Uh, but we'd love to have you join us. Again, the Chicken Analytics onboard session tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern time. But in the meantime, take advantage of Sandy's offer here, 16 50 for a full Jake and analytics. Uh, in the meantime, everyone have a great evening. Check out the webinar, uh, the recording tomorrow morning. Uh, but until then, have a great afternoon and we will see you tomorrow on the onboard session.